This is part two of this series of videos that I have on starting up these backpacking stoves with uh, a combination of fuels, starting off uh, primarily with uh, a fairly easy to start fuel such as Coleman fuel and then progressing to kerosene, which is a much more difficult fuel to uh, start. The first part of this uh, series was using two fuel bottles, one of the fuel bottles having Coleman fuel and the other one kerosene. And this demonstrated that it was possible if there was enough Coleman fuel to adequately preheat the burner. Unfortunately, this required two fuel bottles. So the current technique is a continuation of a method that I started out with with the Primus MFS stove. This is a uh, another trial run uh, with the manual injection of the Coleman fuel rather than hooking this up to a fuel bottle. I have the adapter here as I've shown before and I have machined slightly the end here so that the this is more correct as far as a good seal uh, so I'm going to go ahead and connect this to the to the connector that normally goes for the pump and just very lightly and tighten it against the O-ring. This syringe has got a little bit more, well, it's got about 6 cc's of Coleman fuel but it has an air bubble in it. I want to try to force it through the uh, adapter when I finally get around to doing this. And I will simply hook this up to the adapter here. It, this is just a press fit. And then put one cc of uh, denatured alcohol into the priming pad, which is what I normally do with these things. And start this up. I think it's going. Yeah, it's going now. And then put this on here to retain some of the heat. And I'll give this about 30 seconds to kind of slightly bring the temperatures up slightly. This fuel bottle here has got about 50 milliliters left of uh, kerosene in it. And what I'm going to do is I will hand inject the Coleman fuel until it basically runs out of the syringe. Of course, there will still be fuel in the line. Once it runs out of the, uh, the syringe, I will get up to the fuel bottle. Okay, this is about 30 seconds. Let me go ahead and see if I can get this started up. Open up the control valve. And start injecting the colon fuel. It wasn't quite as heated up as I wanted. If it had been heated up enough, this would have started. So I'll have to just let this go as it is and just pretend that there was an adequate heating here. Before. And now this also had maybe a little bit of residual kerosene in the line from the last run. Okay, now I'm hand injecting. Oh, that won't do any good. This is a, a tough one uh, to work with because the, the maintaining the pressure on this is not as easy as with the other generator that was on the Hexon. So I'm going to go ahead and put some pressure behind this I'll just leave the collar on for now. And as you can see, the Coleman fuel is being injected. And it doesn't take much pressure, uh, surprisingly. It really is very, 
a very relaxed degree of pressure. It's not. I've injected uh, contrast uh, through a syringe that requires a significantly higher amount of pressure than this. This is really fairly light. All right, I'm almost finished with the syringe. Okay, that's the end of that. Uh, let me go ahead and, dis and close off the control valve, disconnect this, and now connect up the kerosene fuel bottle. Keep in mind that there's still uh, COVID fuel that's in the fuel line. So this should start up fairly easily once I open up the, uh, oh, let me take this off. All right, now it'll take about a minute for all the Coleman fuel to run through before the kerosene hits it. And the idea here is that hopefully there's been enough preheating with the Coleman fuel stuff that's in the line plus the stuff that was injected by hand to then allow for adequate operation of the scope and the kerosene. There will be some transition here. It will probably have a little bit of a yellowish tinge. kerosene that's now hitting it. You can see it had a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it. Let me open this all the way. Okay, that is all the way. As you can see, the transition is almost non-existent. If the generator is, hooked, is heated up enough, there will be a relatively unremarkable transition from the Coleman to the kerosene. But it is required to have an adequate amount of preheating. Otherwise, you end up with fireballs, all sorts of nasty stuff that you don't want. This is going to be a trial run to see whether or not it's possible to hand inject Coleman fuel through the line as a substitute for the bottle. So I put one cc of denatured alcohol into the priming pan and we'll put this on here and I'll just wait on this one for about a minute. It's pretty calm right now and I might as well go ahead and take advantage of the chimney I have five cc drawn up in this syringe slightly more actually okay we're coming up on about a minute I have a sufficient amount of heat in here I'm going to go ahead and take off however the uh, lid before I start this here goes nothing I'm injecting now. Okay, it doesn't require much of a pressure to do this. Um, much to my surprise, I'm not going to worry about taking this collar off. All I want to do is just see if this is possible. Now, as you can maybe tell I've already put in a little more than two cc's into the line let me open up this valve all the way oh, it is open all the way let me apply a little bit more pressure here it does not require a lot strangely I put a little bit more pressure in It 
require that much pressure. Much to my surprise, I thought it might be a lot more difficult. Well, since I have the kerosene bottle here, I'm going to go ahead and fully inject all the fuel that's in here and hook up the kerosene bottle. Okay, I've turned off the uh, control valve. And let me go get the kerosene bottle. It still has about, oh, 50 milliliters or so of fuel left in the line. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, now that's still Coleman fuel that's in the line. Let me go ahead and take off the, uh, uh, the collar. Let's see if I can open up these. And let's see what happens. Now it takes about a minute for the fuel to run through before the kerosene hits it. So now it'll be interesting to see uh, how this turns out. I'm not timing this, so I don't know where the uh, coma fuel is, but it'll be obvious when the kerosene hits. That's the kerosene. And much to my surprise, it actually seems to be working. Let me open it up all the way. Let me close off this and unplug this and hook up the kerosene. It should be plenty hot to support the Coleman fuel. This wasn't what I had in mind, but sometimes this is what happens anyway. So, now this is again residual Coleman fuel that's in the line, and there's about three and a half, no, there's about four and a half cc's in here. So this will burn again, there will have a pot on here. This should not have those yellow flames that were flashing out before. It should be relatively unremarkable. That is at least how some of the other ones have been turning out and I've been very happy with the results. It'll, it'll be obvious when the kerosene hits it though. It always changes its character. Usually, even under the best circumstances, there's some yellow tip to the uh, flame under the worst case scenario, you get a fireball. So far, using this hand injection technique, I've not had one malfunction relating to the lack of adequate preheating. Now you can see some of the yellowish uh, flame. That's got a little bit more of this yellow flame than I would like. But it's not, it's not terrible. And again, if you had a pot on here, it would be, uh, it would protect it from, as you can see, unlike the last video that I had shown, where it took almost a minute for this to stabilize, well, it's still having some sputtering. But it's relatively minor. You simply inject. Uh, you're going to need a certain amount of fuel no matter what. About five to five and a half cc's of Coleman fuel no matter how you slice it. So whether it goes through a short line or goes through a long line, it's not going to make any difference. So you don't have to worry about calibrating the line. You just simply start injecting. 